Truth Unveiled here, and today we're going to be talking about some prophetic signs that are coming up, not just in America, but for the rest of the world. And we're going to be focusing specifically on the Great American Eclipse that's coming up in a few months, and also the 923-2017 sign. Now before we begin, let me preface this video and say, am I saying that the rapture is going to be happening? There's going to be some great big event that happens? Martial law is going to be declared on 9-23-2017 or any time before then? No, I am not saying any of that. We do not know the day or hour when it comes to judgment, but we know we need to be ready at all times. But rather, I'm going to show you how deep this really goes and how prophetic this sign really is. And then come to your own conclusion. This is not about, oh, it's the end of the world and placing dates on when the end of the world is. No, this is not what this is about, but rather to get more educated on exactly what's going on and how deep it really goes. So now that we got that out of the way, this is an actual map that comes from GreatAmericanEclipse.com slash nation. And it lets you know the actual eclipse that will occur on 8-21-2017. Now, as you can see right here, it'll start off in about the Salem, Oregon area for about two minutes at 10.15 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and continue all the way onward past Idaho and then past Wyoming. And by the time it reaches 11.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, it'll be passing over Wyoming towards Nebraska and then also passing over Kansas, the Kansas City, Missouri area. For about 2 minutes and 40 seconds, the path will then continue on past Missouri into Illinois and then also towards Kentucky, passing through Tennessee and then going a little bit into the Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina area. And then by about 2.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it'll leave South Carolina and then keep going. Now here's another enlarged map showing you the path of the eclipse. Like we said, you can see some cities here. Like we said, it passes over Salem and begins at Lincoln City, Oregon, and it continues on through Idaho. But what I found interesting about this is that if you keep going on the map, it passes through Casper, Wyoming, then it goes towards Lincoln, Nebraska, but and then it also passes through Kansas City. But when you get towards the Illinois area, the point of the longest eclipse right here at two minutes and 41 seconds is right here, right under Carbondale, Illinois, right near Cairo, right above Memphis. And we're going to talk more about that and why that's so important. And of course, it continues on through Nashville. And also, if you keep going over here, it continues through Columbia, South Carolina, and then Charleston. And when you look at it all together, it looks like it's making a big slash through America, right through the middle of America. And it's no surprise or coincidence whatsoever, because in 2024, there's supposed to be another eclipse that goes the other way. And we'll be talking more about that later on. Now, before we go more into detail when it comes to the 2024 solar eclipse that's going to represents the Virgin constellation, we also know that this does happen frequently, that this star does have a retrograde motion, but there's something very interesting and suspicious indeed about this particular one, which starts about at 1119 in 2016, so about the middle of November, and we're here in Carbondale, USA. Now, if you keep going, you start to see right here, and I'm just going to go really fast right now. You can see that the star is moving in the womb and pretty much stays in the womb there for about a few weeks. Now normally the king star only has a retrograde motion of about a few months when it comes to being in the virgin constellation. But as you keep going, as you see we're now entering the first month of 2017, you see that it's still right here in the womb. And if you keep going, it pretty much stays there. Uh, like I said, we're going to keep it moving all the way. Uh, keep going, keep going, keep going. And it pretty much stays there. Now it travels a little bit south right here. But once you get to the second month, it's still right there. But by the time we get to the third month, the star pretty much stays in the exact same place and it pretty much stays stationary right there where we are right now currently. But as you keep it moving, it still stays in the same place. Now when you get to the sixth month, it pretty much stays 
in the same place area right here. But look what happens after a month, after the sixth month. Here we are at 725, 2017. Now you can see the star is pretty much in the exact same place. It hasn't really moved. But when you keep going though, and when you get to the eighth month, it starts to move down south a little bit more and starts to travel down the womb physically. And this is when the lunar eclipse occurs two weeks before the Great American Eclipse. And like I said, we're going to keep going, keep going. And now we've actually arrived to when the Great American Eclipse takes place. And then for Carbondale specifically in Illinois, USA, if you go to about 1.19 p.m. or 13.19 on the actual software, if you go about another minute or two, that this is when the actual total solar eclipse takes place indeed. And it stays there for pretty much about 2 minutes and 40 seconds. And then afterwards, of course, the moon then leaves the sun and then it's light again. So then after that, within a nine month period, Jupiter's retrograde has traveled from here inside of the womb, down the womb. But if you keep going just 33 days later to the 923, 2017 sign, as you can see, Jupiter is still moving even more down and traveling down the womb. And as we keep going more towards 923, everything is about to start aligning. And then once we get to 923, you see that the woman is clothed with the sun and the moon is under her feet. Now you also see too that the star right here, the J star that represents the Messiah and the Virgin constellation that represents the Virgin that's spoken of, you see that the star is all the way from here to down here. And you also see how all of these stars align quite perfectly, even the moon under her feet, and also Leo, the lion, which represents the lion of the tribe of Yahuda or Judah, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stars, plus these three stars right here for a total of 12 stars. But really, I just wanted to show you the retrograde motion right here and how it's very interesting and suspicious indeed and in tying that in to the eclipse. But it's also no surprise because 33 days after that, we see this sign aligning in the sky. Now there's also something else interesting about this too, because just as the eclipse is about to end here at Charleston, South Carolina, we know 33 days later is the 923-2017 sign that's going to appear in the sky. Oh, but that's not the only thing, because this location right here just so happens to be on the 33rd parallel north, which is 33 degrees north of the Earth's equatorial plane, and note how Wikipedia subliminally tells you truth but you could see the 33rd parallel right here at about the Arkansas Louisiana border and if you take a look at that more clearly here's the line right here of the 33rd parallel north so if you keep going and keep going and keep going you get about right here towards southeastern South Carolina and if we go back to the map that's exactly where Charleston is where this eclipse is going to end huh is that a surprise and prophetically speaking, we know that the retrograde motion of the king star Jupiter represents the birthing of the Messiah. It represents the birth of a nation, just like the movie Birth of a Nation. Hello, what are they really trying to tell us? And it's no surprise or coincidence either because the period at when it starts to the period of the Great American Eclipse just so happens to be about 39 weeks and two days and then the 923 sign occurring just a few few weeks after that. Now a normal pregnancy takes from between anywhere from between 37 to 42 weeks and we see that this is 39 weeks. But then in the spring of 2024, there's going to be yet another total solar eclipse. At least there's scheduled to be another one in North America. And this one's going to start all the way in Mexico and travel all the way up northeast through the United States and then all the way up into some parts of Canada like Toronto and Montreal. And it's going to keep going from there. Now, rarely does that ever happen that there's two back-to-back -back solar eclipse in the same location that just so happen to be total eclipses within a seven-year period, especially covering the entire country of America. What does this really mean? 
But when you put both of them together, it actually marks a giant X across the United States. And here's a map right here. I'll enlarge it. But this is the 2017 eclipse. And this is the one that's supposed to take place or scheduled in 2024. Of course, we do not know the day or hour. But as you can see, the point of this is that it makes a giant X across the United States. And mind you, this hasn't happened since 1918 so over 99 years since there's been a total solar eclipse over the entire continental usa and we know that yahusha warns us to watch out for the signs of the sun moon and the stars now here's that same map enlarged as you can see this is the pathway of the 2017 eclipse and this is the one of the 2024 one and you can see it makes a giant x throughout the entire country but what's interesting is that the very center of it you find something even more suspicious indeed and the center point is towards southern Illinois, southeastern Missouri, and also western Kentucky right here. And it just so happens to merge at about Carbondale, Illinois, around the Mississippi River, and also very close to Cairo, Illinois, too. Now here's another enlarged map of Southern Illinois specifically, and this one is showing the 2017 eclipse that's going to occur in a few months. As you can see, the areas closest to the blue line is where it's going to be total solar eclipse and it's going to be total darkness for about 2 minutes and 40 seconds. So very close to Carbondale, but also within these areas there will be total eclipse. But you also see Cairo, Illinois on this map too. Huh, where else have I seen Cairo? Like Cairo, Egypt? Oh yeah, and it just so happens to be near Memphis, Tennessee along the Mississippi. And by the way, if you look up Carbondale, Carbondale, Illinois just so happens to be known as Little Egypt. What is this really trying to say? Now, I've done a note back in 2015 exposing and showing how America is literally Egypt, not just spiritually, but also literally. And what I've gone and shown is I've done an analysis showing how they both have similarities and how the Nile River, which is a river that goes all the way through Egypt, as you can see on a map right here, which is known as the Cradle of Civilization, if you look at it, 30% of Egypt just about is to the east of it, and about 70% is to the west. Well, when you look at America, the Mississippi River pretty much almost goes through the entire country, and about 30% of America is to the east, and 70% is to the west. If you keep going, you start to see other things too, like how the city of Memphis, Egypt just so happens to lie on a river along with Cairo. Where else have we seen that? Because both Cairo, Illinois and Memphis, Tennessee both just so happen to lie on the Mississippi River, the Memphis of America. And did I mention there's also a pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee, just as there is in Memphis, Egypt. You can see the statue right here with the pyramid behind it right in front of the Mississippi. And then I've done more comparisons too when it comes to the Sphinx and the pyramid right here in Egypt as you can see together. Well, it's the same thing even in Las Vegas, Nevada in America with an obelisk right next to it. Now, why is it so important to know the similarities between America and Egypt, both spiritually and literally? Because when you know who the real historic people of the scriptures are, notice how I said historic, then you start to understand true prophecy. And when you understand where they are and how they got there, then you understand exactly what scripture is talking about and you begin to see America in scripture and in prophecy and you also begin to see exactly those who are calling themselves Jews in prophecy too because last I checked they're of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not but they do lie indeed and they've been lying and I've done plenty of videos on this but you're going to see See exactly how deep this rabbit hole goes. And now we're going to be covering a prophecy that no one is talking about when it comes to this sign specifically in this eclipse and we'll also be talking more about why it's so important to know indeed and how it relates to the end time. Brashyath Genesis chapter 15 verses 13 through 14. 
And he, Yahuwah, said to Abram, Know for certain that your seed are to be sojourners in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. But the nation whom they serve I am going to judge, and afterward let them come out with great possessions. Acts chapter 7 verses 6 through 7 and Alua spoke in this way, that his seed would be sojourning in a foreign land, and that they would be enslaved and mistreated four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be enslaved I shall judge, said Alua, and after that they shall come out and serve me in this place. Second Estras chapter 15 verses 10 through 12 Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter, I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague, and punishment of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you, nor show favor to the young. Verse 68 and Yahuwah shall bring you back to Egypt in ships, by a way of which I said to you, you are never to see it again. And there you shall be sold to your enemies as male and female slaves, but no one to buy. Now that we've just identified where America fits in scripture and in prophecy, now we're going to see exactly how it all fits historically speaking because yes the scriptures is a history book it is not a religious text about christian people or jewish people and just as we've identified historically speaking notice how i said historically speaking we see who it's about now we also see when the so-called slaves first arrived in america and according to bet they arrived as of 8 20 16 19. Now keep that year in mind. Now notice how when it comes to the 2017 eclipse that's going to take place on 8-21-2017, there's also going to be a partial lunar eclipse that takes place exactly two weeks or 14 days prior on 8-7-2017. And then of course two weeks later will be the actual solar eclipse that takes place in America to its entirety. Huh, now that's interesting because does something else take place that's very similar to this? in 1619 oh yes indeed because on 627 1619 so the very beginning of the summer of 1619 is when a partial lunar eclipse occurred back during this time as you can see right here and i'll be sure to leave this in the description box below so you could take a look at it on your own time and see the parallels between this but what's interesting about this is that followed by two weeks there is a total solar eclipse on 7 11 1619 and can you guess where that solar eclipse is yes that solar eclipse occurred right here in africa as you can see right around the same time that the transatlantic slave trade was booming and around the same exact time that slavery began in america thereby commencing the 400 year prophecy is that a surprise or a coincidence whatsoever what does this really mean but as you can see right here, it says that the instant of greatest eclipse takes place on 7-11-1619 at about approximately 10.30 a.m. Now it's interesting because the eclipse in America starts around this exact same time in the morning. Note too how the same solar eclipse that occurred all throughout Africa, as you can see in regions known today, of course, as Cameroon, Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, the Republic of the Congo, and then the Democratic Republic of the Congo right here, and it extended all the way down to Tanzania and Mozambique. Now, if you keep reading here, it says that 7 11 1619, the total solar eclipse, is an exceptionally long total eclipse with the duration at greatest eclipse of about 6 minutes and 41 seconds. And we know that the one in America is supposed to be about 7 minutes long, too, total. 
Now here's an enlarged map so you can see the parallels and so that you can see exactly what time it really is for America or should I say Egypt because exactly around this time is when the first so-called slaves were taken in ships and brought to the new world known as America specifically or should I say Egypt but it gets even deeper than this. Because when you look at the duration, so when you look at the start of the actual eclipse in Africa that occurred on 7-11-1619, all the way up until when slavery began in America at Jamestown back on 8-20-1619, you see that the period of this is about 40 days right here. And you can take a look at it. I'll be sure to leave it in the description box below. But that's not all because it just so happens that if you look at the duration between this next up coming eclipse on 821 2017 in America if you go 40 days later and include the end date duration you get a date at about 929 2017 that's interesting because that's around the same time as what the day of atonement and also note how you have here too the 40 days right here 40 days which represents in scripture of course trials and tribulation and testing indeed now am i saying anything's going to happen within that period Am I saying anything big, huge, or ginormous is going to happen? No, I am not. We need to be ready at all times for the coming of Yahusha. We need to be ready for judgment at all times because no one knows the day or hour but our father Yahuwah. But what this is showing you is showing you the similarities and how the start and finish of what America, because we know that judgment is even at the door. And it's also interesting because here, according to Encyclopedia Virginia, the ship that arrived in 1619 to Jamestown, Virginia, just so happened to be called White Lion, where they were sold again likely into slavery. And notice how this website says likely into slavery. It also says the historians have long believed that these so-called Africans to have come to Virginia from the Caribbean, but Spanish records suggest that they've been captured in a Portuguese or Spanish Spanish controlled area of where West Central Africa the same place where the eclipse occurred just 40 days sooner on 7-11 1619 and the reason I brought up the white lion slave ship reference because when you look at when slavery began in America in 1619 and I have the date right here as of 820 1619 you see exactly where the sun was in the Leo the lion constellation and we know which tribe was sold into slavery specifically Yauda or Judah the lion of the tribe of Yauda Judah is it all starting to make sense now just how like 398 years and a day later we'll see on 821 2017 the same thing the sun and the moon will be in the leo lion constellation over america where much of the descendants of the lion of the tribe of yauda judah are even to this day as we speak and then just so that you also know and were aware there was also known as the ring of fire solar eclipse that occurred back in the second month so about a few months ago it occurred on 226 2017 in south america and africa so in conclusion we know that during the great american eclipse there will be a slash literally made right over america over egyptian influenced areas such as cairo carbondale also known as little egypt the mississippi river and right above memphis tennessee places that we've heard of in egypt we also know that it marks an x with the 2024 total solar eclipse and we also know how there's a lunar eclipse two weeks prior to this on 8-7-2017. And by the way, the Great American Eclipse marks 398 years in one day after slavery began in America, very reminiscent to the eclipses that we went over in 1619 with the lunar eclipse preceding the solar eclipse in Africa back in 7-11-1619 with slavery only beginning 40 days later. Later, and just like this event here, 40 days after the Great American Eclipse, we land right at Day of Atonement, which scripturally speaking represents deliverance. 
So we see that this sign in the sky represents the end of America and that's why Yahuwah gives us signs to warn us and to sound the alarm so we can see exactly what time it is just like the 1619 eclipse in Africa represented the beginning of captivity and the beginning of America as a nation. Well guess what the great American eclipse along with the 923 sign represents the end of America and we know that Yahuwah, Yahusha is the beginning and the end and we know that it represents the coming judgment to come. Of course, we do not know when, we do not know the day or hour, but we know that we must remain ready and be ready at all times. We must always be vigilant, diligent, sober, because we know not the day or hour. We know that it could occur in three months from now, three weeks from now, three years from now, or three decades from now. But regardless, we need to remain ready and we need to remain protected and sealed in Yahua and Yahusha. Please seek Yahua and his true son, Yahusha. Usha, and if you would like to learn more, please take a look at the description box below. But this is Truth Unveiled here, keeping you updated as always, and saying as always, Shalom.
Mythical planet system Nibiru is to pass by Earth before the year is out, if a series of radical biblical doomsday theories are to be believed. End of world prophets, who believe in the growing Nibiru theory, are convinced it is a many solar system consisting of a sun, planets and moons, which is lurking on the edge of our solar system. They claim it has a huge orbit of the sun. Nibiru believers are convinced the rogue system is making its way from the outer solar system inwards, where it will wreak havoc on Earth as it passes at about 4 million miles away. They say the planet will cause the poles to switch, sparking great earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, which threaten billions of lives. Believers now claim it will be on an approach path with the Earth between November 20th and December 20th. However, there are claims it will not wipe out all life on Earth and humanity will be able to survive. One leading figure in the Nibiru Cataclysm movement even predicts mankind will prosper after the disaster, DailyStar.co.uk reports. Christian conspiracy theorist David Mead claims to have spent years unlocking Bible codes to work out just when Nibiru will appear. He said, Nibiru will only affect one-third to half of the Earth. Major rebuilding will be needed. It is not an extinction-level event. In fact, after these days of trouble, According to the book of Revelation there will be 1,000 years of peace, called the millennium. So these are end of days events but not end of the world events. There will supposedly be seven years of tribulation before humanity can advance, he claims. The period mentioned in the Bible warns of famines, natural disasters and apocalyptic wars. It is also said that the Antichrist would arrive on earth and begin a devastating reign. 
Mr. Mead forecast Nibiru's arrival in the apocalypse using the Bible books of Isaiah, Luke, and Revelation. The author behind Planet X, the 2017 arrival has also previously identified the exact place he predicts the planet to hit. He previously said, when Planet X hits, it will hit one of our three main oceans, the Atlantic, Pacific or Indian. Basically the oceans facing the sun. And it will destroy one third of the earth, not 100%. It will create massive tsunamis and trigger some super volcanoes, of which we have about 20. So it's going to cause some major problems. Many people claim to have already seen the Doom Planet, with sightings reported across the world. Mr. Mead said we are already seeing some of the effects. He believes the gravitational pull of Nibiru is causing huge solar flares on the Sun and a raft of earthquakes. However, it is some consolation that Mr. Mead predicted Nibiru would become visible in the skies from September 23rd. He then said it would pass us in October. All these dates came and went, because as NASA points out, Nibiru is a myth and a hoax, despite the amount of believers. NASA scientist Dr. David Morrison said, there is no credible evidence whatever for the existence of Nibiru. There are no pictures, no tracking, no astronomical observations. I can quite specifically say how we know Planet X or Nibiru does not exist and does not threaten Earth. Firstly, if there was a planet headed into the inner solar system that was going to come close to the Earth, it would already be inside the orbit of Mars, it would be bright, it would be easily visible to the naked eye, if it was up there it would be easy to see it, all of us could see it. Space Boff and Dr. Brian Cox has also insisted Planet X does not exist. And Associate Professor John D. Horner, an astronomer at the University of Southern Queensland in Australia, said, I've never heard of anybody who's an actual astronomer talk about Nibiru before. It's basically an urban myth, it's like having a biologist coming out and talking about werewolves and the Sasquatch being real. You just wouldn't hear it. 